Hey everyone, in this episode I'm going to be starting a brand new Rails 6 application and I'm going to show you how to plan your database schema and set up the corresponding active record models. I'm also going to show you some tips on how you can make the associations between those models a little bit easier to navigate by using the alias attribute feature of Rails. So let's get started by taking a look at the business requirements. The general problem is that we will need to create a way for a large group of people to place votes on a referendum or an election remotely, and they're gonna be voting by something known as an electronic proxy vote. So here are a few general requirements. The individuals in this voting campaign will have an email link that they can use to reach the electronic proxy form, for security, each email is going to have its own unique code. That's another requirement that I'm going to use the MailChimp API for, which I think I'll do in a later episode. And the proxy voting form is going to need a few fields to make it legally valid, like an electronic signature, fields identifying the person and their address general things that would go on any sort of a legally recognized voting ballot. And additionally, some functionality I'd like to throw into this is that the system will be generating emails for confirmation of the votes and can also generate PDF versions of the proxy forms, which can be mailed to the users. So this application is going to have something at the uh, top level called a campaign. And what this is, it's just going to be the way of grouping all of the questions or candidates or whatever it is that you're going to be voting on. They're going to be organized into this campaign. And then for each user, you're going to have a series of response records. And that's what's going to be generated by this form. Each user account is going to be pre-registered by an administrator. So we're not going to worry about making login forms or registration details. This is just going to be a very minimum viable product, bare bones application. So let's get started coding. Okay, so I'm going to start this new application. I'm going to make sure that I have the latest version of Rails installed in my gem set. And uh, why don't we just call this e-voting. Now for this program's very basic settings and Rails setup, I'm just going to do a lot of copy and paste for my last project the Stonks on Rails, which by the way I have a whole series on. Check out the playlist. And I wish there was a better way of transferring settings from one program to another, but the problem that you run into is that versions of Rails change so frequently that it's really hard to make a template because then you've got to get your template up to date all the time as well. So I just kind of like to use the last program that I worked on as a starting point for the new application that I'm working on. I think it's kind of interesting that Turbo Links is still included in Rails. I guess the uh, Turbo framework is still experimental, but that's something that I would like to consider using in this application. However, since it's not the default, I'll just put these placeholders here and wait until I'm ready for that part of the front end before enabling it. Now, as you recall from a previous application, and I'm not sure if I include this in my video or not, but Rack Mini Profiler was including some additional things on the page showing performance statistics, which I didn't like because it was kind of tainting the, uh, the way that the page would display in production to, to show that development level stuff. And it wasn't really important statistics, so I'm gonna take it out. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and create a home controller just to have like a landing page set up that I could uh, use to test out the templates and uh, make sure that the application is working and we'll go from there. So after doing a little bit more thinking about this, this is the database schema that I've come up with and how we're gonna kind of structure the information part of the application. You're gonna have a user and a user is gonna submit multiple ballots and each ballot is going to belong to a part of a campaign and the campaign is going to be like your election or referendum or whatever. Of course, the campaign also has many ballots. So each ballot, the questions on the ballot, I'm going to call a ballot prompt. And for each ballot prompt, you're going to have uh, a set of choices. And there's a different things that we could do with uh, the ballot prompt choice. We could probably change the type uh, to have it like an open-ended sort of thing for survey questions or whatever, but in this 
type of uh, proxy thing that we're doing uh, for this particular use case, uh, we're just going to have like a defined set of possible responses. And those are going to be stored as ballot response items. And then the ballot responses get tied to the original ballot. Uh, so why don't we give this a try and we'll get our models prepared. No, the data models, I mean, of course. Okay, we could see here in our file system that the models have been created by our command line commands. And here's the database migrations that create the underlying data tables. Something that I like to do before running my uh, first uh, database migration is I like to run through all these files and make sure that I didn't make any mistakes or if I want to add any little default settings, I could go ahead and do that. For example, I want to have a database level protection here that will make sure that you can't have a null title on the campaign, that the campaign title has to be filled out. So we're going to do null false. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and run the migration and uh, we'll go from there and try to play around with the data. Uh, looks like I made a typo. Now I gotta set the relations between all the data models here. So another thing that I forgot that I would want to do is I would want to associate a user with a campaign so that you can't have other users voting in campaigns where they don't belong. So let's go ahead and create a campaign users model that's going to be the many-to-many. Uh, -many. Okay, let's fire up our Rails console and uh, try to create some C data for this. So that's created. So uh, let's go ahead and assign that user to it. Now let's try to create some ballot questions for this campaign. So we have a campaign. What's going to be on the proxy ballot? Right now we don't have any ballot prompts. So let's make some. All right. So we'll just uh, create like an election question here. Who would be the president of Minecraftia? And let's go make some choices for this. All right, so Waddles will be our first selection. And by the way, we could make a shorthand for this so that we don't have to retype this lengthy ballot prompt choices again. Let's go ahead and do that. So instead of ballot prompt choices, we could do alias choices to ballot prompt choices, and then we could access that by choices. So reload our models. And let's, uh, let's pull up the campaign again. Actually, we, why don't we alias that to campaign prompts instead of calling them ballot prompts. And now we don't have to do ballot prompts anymore, we just do prompts. There we go. So the prompts, and we'll do the first prompt and let's see what sort of choices we get. All right, so we have Waddles. Let's create some more choices. All right, so let's see where choices are for this campaign. All right, so these would be our selections on the ballot. So now let's say that our hypothetical user wants to submit a ballot and we're going to create that. So how what's that data model going to look like? So we have our uh, first user here. There's no ballots yet, so we're going to create a ballot. No campaign associated with that yet. Now let's add some validation. Is this ballot, ballot valid? campaign is required. So when you have an active record association, 
that is a belongs to, it automatically has a required validation. So we gotta set the campaign on this. All right. And now for our responses. Okay, so these, uh, when we look at the, when we look at the choices and the ballot question, each choice in the database is gonna have a unique ID. And so the response will point to the choice ID number. Is that an optimal design for this? I don't know, but we're gonna give it a try. So you might be wondering, why did I name all these models ballot this and ballot that? if I'm just going to alias the relations anyway? Well, that's because I felt that having, if you want to call like just a, the table responses and have the model just be named response, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, to me, that just doesn't feel descriptive enough because I don't know how big this application might grow over time. So I like to be specific in when I'm naming things. And another way that you could probably work with this is to uh, namespace all of these ballot related things. And that way you'd, you'd have a, a folder here for ballot. And then the, in the ballot namespace, you'd have response, prompt choice, prompt, and, uh, and then the model names will be simpler, but the underlying database tables will be the same name. However, uh, this is uh, one way to do it uh, using alias attribute and uh, just having kind of a repetitive model name and I don't know, that works for me. Okay, so I have about an hour of coding that I'm gonna skip in this video because I didn't think it made a very interesting content for this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the finished product of our data model and the active record, active model relations uh, to kind of show you how that works. And I think that will be a good stopping point for today. And I'm gonna use this as the basis for the next part of this video, which is going to introduce some validations and the forms. So here's what we got. So this database is going to have a lot of users in it and a user is going to belong to a campaign and what the campaign is going to be is it's going to be something that an administrator type of user in the system is going to set up and is going to associate with various users that can vote on the campaign. So here's what a campaign is going to look like. You're going to have a series of questions associated with that campaign, which I guess would be like, who, who, is your, who are you voting for? What is the office that the person is running for? Uh, you know, what, what is the material being voted on? So you could have a series of questions and I call them props for the purpose of this because I, I was thinking like a prompt is like the command prompt on the computer. It's kind of like asking you a question. I don't know what they really call those uh, questions on a ballot, what the official name is. So uh, that's what I came up with. So here in this campaign, we have one question that's acting as a prompt that will be shown on the quote ballot. Now each prompt is going to have like a multiple choice associated with it. And that's going to be the possible answers that you could have to a prompt. And maybe down the line, we could change this so that uh, the choices, you could have different types of choices. Like you could have like a, an open-ended sort of choice. Uh, but basically for the purpose of what this is going to be, which is going to be like a proxy voting type of application, uh, you're going to want to have a set number of selections that users can select from. 
you know, may, maybe there could be a write-in one someday, but uh, we're not focusing on that right now for this minimum viable product. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to have the choices as a uh, separate table is because it'll, it'll allow you to associate more than one choice to uh, the response. So certain types of questions, you might say pick two candidates that are your top two or your top three candidates. In a lot of cases, it's just gonna be one. And that's where validation is gonna come into play. So we'll write a validator for that in the next video. So basically, this campaign.prompts and the prompt choices, this is what we're gonna to use to build the form that a user sees when they log into the system with a unique code and they're viewing the particular form that they're gonna fill out for this campaign as their proxy. Now the other end of that is when the user makes their selections and they hit that submit button, what's gonna do is it's gonna create something called a ballot. And each user for a campaign is allowed to have one ballot. So as you can see here, the ballot's associated with both the user ID and the campaign ID. And we will use validation to ensure that there's only one per user and campaign. And now here is where the responses are gonna get recorded. Each ballot is gonna have an associated responses record and these are going to be the analog to the prompt. So we could take this first response here and we could do response.prompt to see which prompt question it's referring to. Now, how do we figure out what choices the user selected for this response? Well, that's where the selections come in. So a response is gonna have a series of selections associated with it. Uh, in this case, we're gonna have just one selection and we could take a look at which choice that was by the choice ID. And there we go. This person voted for Waddles to be the president of Minecraftia. Well, that's our data model in a nutshell. As we write the form, there is a good chance that this is going to be modified or changed a little bit, but this is a good starting point for the next video, which I'm going to be working on. If you want to see it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video. Now, if you want to see the code for this, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a Patreon tier, and if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, then just sign up for that Patreon tier and then I'll send you the GitLab link where I'm gonna be posting the code for this application and you could take a look at it there. I guess I'll see you next time.